Here's a really bad analogy. I guess you know what type of fuel goes into your car. I'm sure you do, because if you put the wrong stuff in there, you're going to have a really bad time, get stuck at the side of the road. What about under the bonnet? Well, you'll see that all of the uh, caps have a picture on the top that tells you what's supposed to go in here. Uh, hopefully this will segue somewhat into the topic of our video today, which is type hints in Python, because you don't want to put the wrong type into your Python functions. Before we get to that, I'd like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. So Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering a huge range of topics to help inspire and explore your creativity. So I've been using Skillshare for a while now. And I've thoroughly enjoyed discovering new classes, especially with new premium ones being added each week. In fact, I've actually just finished watching Marquez Brownlee's YouTube success script shoot and edit with MKBHD, which I felt as a content creator was a must watch. As MK BDHD is one of the best out there. So watching Marquez work uh, and seeing what goes into creating one of his videos was utterly fascinating to me, uh, especially parts about hooking your audience in. And I feel like I've definitely got loads of things to try and incorporate into my content now. So the first 1000 people to use the link in the description below or use my code John Watson Rooney will get a one month free trial. So once again, thank you very much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and use that link in the description below or my code John Watson Rooney. So in their simplest form to add a type hint to something, we'll just say our variable name, a comma, and then we're gonna say that X should be an integer. So if we actually try to give X a string, we get this uh, message here, expected a type int when we got string instead. And that obviously goes away when you give it an actual integer. So let's use it in a function, which is probably more common where you're gonna see it. So what you'd wanna do for each of your arguments is specify the type that they are supposed to be. So this is gonna give us that highlighting in our code editor when we are trying to give our function something that isn't the expected type. So let's do my float, float rather, there we go. Let's put space there. And you can see right away down here, I have this underlining here and PyCharm is telling me it's expecting a type of int, but it got a string instead. Now, obviously when we run this, now, of course, when we run this, it's not gonna cause any problems. And that is because type hints are not enforced at runtime. You can use something called MyPy, which is an external package that you can use to run through your code. And it will tell you where you've done all of this if you want to. Um, I'm not gonna cover that in this video, but it's nice and easy to use. Just look it up. So let's change this back to an actual integer. There we go. And you'll see now that the typing has gone away and we still get what we're expecting down here. We can also say what we're expecting to get out of this function. We use the little uh, the dash and the arrow, and then we type in the, what's expected to come out of this. So if I say we're expecting out of this function, a string, you'll see that all of this gets highlighted straight away because out of this function, you can clearly see we're actually returning a dictionary. When we were telling it, we're expecting a string. So let's go ahead and type dict and you'll notice that this is highlighted underlined in red and that's because we need to import this from typing import dict if you want to use these you need to import typing and list is also one of those so bear that in mind but for in string and the basic ones you don't need to now this is all well and good but let's have a look at it in a bit more of a a bit more of a, a real world example so i have this script here that pulls some information from an api and it returns it in a dictionary format that I've put here. So let's import our typing and we're gonna use uh, dict and also list. There we go. And let's have a look at our first function. So this, ver this variable that we wanna pass in, this argument, food, we know it's gonna go into our URL. It needs to be a string. So let's go and do that, string. And what's coming out of this function? Well, this is coming a list of dictionaries. So I'm gonna put list. Although we're actually doing a response object, so until we run this, our code editor doesn't know what this is, so it's not gonna give us any uh, highlighting there. But for the sake of it, I'm putting in this is gonna be a list. So our pass data function is taking in the API data, but if we look here, when I'm getting this API data, I'm looping through each item in the list. So I'm gonna say that this should be a dictionary that we're getting in, and we're also returning a dictionary coming out. If I was to say that this should be a list, you'll see that this is going to be highlighted here because it's saying that it's expecting a list, but we got a dictionary, so let's change that back. So now we've put the type hints into our um, 
two main functions here. Let's go ahead and change this, this first function, which we're saying should be a string. Let's change this to an integer. Now, if we try and call this function with an integer, it's going to give us this expected type string. We've got int instead, which is going to be really useful for us if we were working somewhere else in our project. So this is a big project and we pull this function in and we're like, right, what do we need to give it? Well, it's supposed to be a string. It's not an integer because if I try to run it as an integer, we're going to get this error. So this is going to avoid a lot of type errors for you if you are able to successfully put these in. So let's turn this back. There we go. Let's say also we will have tried to give our past data the wrong type as well. You'll see we get that there. Let's add in another function then. Let's say we want to get a list of IDs. So we're going to say def and we'll do pass IDs ID to list. So I'm going to take the whole list that we get for, for back from this API. So I'm going to say we'll have the API main and this is going to be a list. And we're going to output here a list. I'll use the brackets to specify that it should be integers in this list. I'm just going to do a bit of list comprehension. So we'll say ID list is equal to and you'll see that this is already highlighting because we're not returning a list yet. Um, it should be item id this is from the dictionary for item uh, in api main so this is just some list comprehension and now i'm going to return out this id list you'll notice the uh, underlining has gone away because we are indeed returning a list out here so let's grab this we'll comment this one out for the moment and we'll say we want to let's print this and we'll say we're going to give it our data and when we run this we'll get our id list back here so there's one other thing which i actually found when i was researching this video and that is what's called a typed dict which i think might be quite useful in certain situations but i've certainly never come across it before or used it so if you have let me know in the comment section below what you think so what we do is we actually type class and we'll give it a class name of drink and we actually then specify it as a typed dict and again this needs to be imported from here like this what this does is it allows us to create a specific structure and type hints for a dictionary that has a set number of keys so let's say our our uh, id should be an int our name is a string and our alcohol by volume is a float so now to use this we come down to our past data where we're creating our dictionaries. We're going to say this is going to be from following on this typed dict class here. Now, obviously, in this case, this information is coming from the API, so it's not going to give us any type hinting here, but it would do if you were creating this dictionary with data that you have as being input. But what it will do is if I try to add in another key, I add in this again you'll see that we get this we get this error message showing here again that we're expecting to get this type of drink but we got just a normal regular dictionary because we've gone outside of the expected typed dict keys so let me know what you think about that one it's kind of interesting so to sum it up when should you use type hints when you're working on large projects especially when you're collaborating with people but don't need to use them in small uh, scripts it's probably going to take you more time than you would save it will give you this error uh, highlighting in your ide which is really useful especially when you're working over multiple files and importing your functions across different places but just remember that it won't actually stop the code running unless you use something like mypy go and look that up it's really cool so that's going to do it for this video if you've enjoyed this one i think you're going to like this one here where i talk about hiding your api key when you deploy your code to production